Hello, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to work on something very, very cool and slightly terrifying. Today I have the Longines RF7042 super compressor. Um, they have made a heritage model of this. This is the original. So you have an inner rotating bezel and um, a super compressor case. Why it's terrifying is that these have become ridiculously expensive and this one is in very good original condition and I prefer not to muck anything up but um, if I'm going to muck it up I will do it on camera and in style. So the first thing we've noticed is that it's somewhat clanky rotor in there so definitely something we'll have to look at and uh, number two is that there's no way this case back is coming off easy so what i'm going to do is uh glue on a uh, rolex removing uh, case back removing tool on the back here to avoid uh, i'm not sure i think this is in grade i think it'd be safe to glue on there but i don't want to i'm going to glue on the outer rim and um yeah we'll take what we need to do is get this move over to the arrow here and that should uh, allow us to remove the case back yeah very cool very scary the general idea here is to glue this onto the back of the case back so i get very good grip and hopefully loosen the case back and then i can um then i can um uh, dissolve the glue in uh, acetone afterwards I do not appreciate this kind of work <laughs> when um, it's very difficult to get a case back off. Um, it just adds a little bit of stress. Or we can say it's exciting and it adds some excitement to life. But um, yeah, so I'm actually going to line this up with the arrow here so I know where that is. Uh, I'd like to see that. Lines up with the arrow there. I'm going to get this on as evenly as possible. There. As you can see, that's coming on there. And hopefully, this glue will give me enough tension so I can force this, well, open the case back. What I found out is this arrow pointing to the other arrow does um, probably indicate where you want to tighten it when it's tight or something. It uh, doesn't do anything because it is a screw back case back. So uh, I did loosen that with the, um, with the glued on Rolex uh, tool, as you could see, and I have dissolved it in uh, acetone. So the case back is good. Uh, I've already been in here, so you can see here's the rotor, and as expected, we have a um, broken rotor post. So the remnants being inside here. Um, that's simply a case of pushing the old one out. So what I've done is I have looked at uh, my part supplier. They did not have it anymore. It's a very silly rotor post, very... Uh, so um, we'll look at the complete one when we get it, but it's uh, pretty thin and so, 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 um, quite easy to break. Um, and um, susceptible, is that what you say? Yeah, mixing up my English here, sorry guys. Anyway, this uh, has broken, and um, but we have a donor movement on the way, which has a complete rotor post. So of course that happens with a bit of a shock and this is quite a heavy case so i guess this has had a bit of a uh, knock somewhere um, breaking the posts but luckily the um, the actual jewels themselves are not broken and i think this um, oscillating weight will be perfectly fine to put back into the movement so this is the caliber 290 and um, yeah, I always tend to have a fight with these movements as uh, when I clean them, even using the original mainspring, they have a tendency to bank. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes when we put it back together. 
the next thing to do is take the movement out of the case. Luckily, both our specialized case clamps seem to be intact. As I bet they would be real easy to get hold of. Not. Look at that, it's like a step. Very similar to what you see in some Omega models as well. Oops, just drop the case clamp screw into the balance wheel. Don't want to do that. Let's pop the uh, screw and the clamp out. And uh, yeah, we'll get this movement out. So obviously on the movement, you can see a couple of scuffs from where the balance has been clonking around. Uh, obviously this could still be used as a manual wind, but um, not that ideal. The crown out. So we have our original super compressor crowns here with the um, crisscross. That's very cool. It's now time to get the movement out. Flip it around like so. Drop it out. Easy. Wow. Beautiful dial. Let's get a photo of that for the client. And um, yeah, I guess the next thing to do here is remove the hands. And uh, this dial is obviously a little bit sensitive, so we're going to be a bit careful. Take the case ring off. Um, yeah. Let's put that to the side for a second. Well, looking at the case, um, I'm going to manually clean this. I'm going to remove the old gasket. Uh, I don't want to risk taking the crystal out. I'm just going to polish this up lightly and put it back together because I do not want this to crack or be damaged in any way because it's still fairly decent condition. And I think it will come up with the um, standard polish. And uh, when it comes to the when it comes to the case isn't that dirty, I can manually clean this. Um, because if I was to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner, I would have to take the crystal out to remove the inner rotating bezel. And that's still moving fairly easily and doesn't seem to knack it. I just do not want to start unscrewing this and uh, taking it apart because if something breaks here, we're going to be stuck. And we're going to be stuck with a very expensive project. can tell I'm concentrating when I'm quiet. Interesting, this dial kind of has like a uh, extra plate fixed on the other side here. And um, that works as a spacer plate, the underside of the dial itself. It's quite a heavy steel disc actually, put that back. 
and uh, I'm going to put the dial away and we can focus on the movement. Oh, now that's out of the way, we can start focusing on taking this uh, movement apart. It's a fairly interesting one. You could see that the, I believe it's the third wheel comes through here. And it's actually uh, connected with the bridge that also holds the uh, intermediate uh, hour wheel in place. So uh, I guess we'll start by taking the auto winder down, make sure there's no tension in the movement, take the jewels out, take the balance out. Um, take the top section off and then we'll move around and take the uh, winding and setting mechanism out. I'm going to put this in uh, fast film so we um, we uh, we can save a bit of time on that because basically putting the movement back together will be the reverse order of what I'm doing now and there's no point filming that twice. So the balance is moving freely after fitting the uh, shock protection jewels. I'm going to take the balance off and uh, flip it around, start putting the setting and winding mechanism in place because I'm going to have this cover plate here, which uh, also has uh, one of the lower jewels for the gear train. So without that, the, um, it's a little bit tricky to put together. That's my um, that's my uh, winding pinion coming in here, and I'm going to fit the sliding pinion. Put a bit of grease on that. Bit of grease on the sliding surfaces of the winding stem, like so. Fit that. I'm doing this um, this way right now because uh, I have nothing to support these wheels on the un underside as the bridge is not in yet. Um, so it's a bit easier to get the stem in and uh, fit these uh, the sliding pinion and winding pinion. Once I have the um, setting lever in, it's not going to be a problem.
There we go. I can take that away, turn this around. I'm going to fit the uh, setting lever screw. I have to do that off camera because it's a little bit tricky. And that's in place. Now for the um, yoke. Sure, I grease the sliding surfaces where it contacts with the uh, setting lever. Then for the yoke spring. Now for the setting lever spring. The setting lever in place. Let's grease the um, contact surface here as well. Good stuff. Now, uh, the uh, can opinion on this is a little bit different. We have a uh, clutch going inside this um, wheel which is um, driven by the gear train so I'm going to um, try and get a little bit of grease in between the wheel surfaces here and make sure that turns around that's been oiled up now uh, I also need a little bit of uh, red oil on the post which it sits on A big fiber came in there, get that away. And uh, let's put some uh, oil on the intermediate hour wheel post and the intermediate winding wheel post pinion. Here's the intermediate pinion coming on. Intermediate tower wheel. So now I can uh, now I can fit this bridge. that's secure sorry that's out of focus there we go now it can um, 
set the time and wind hopefully when the gear train is actually in so we're going to flip it around and start putting the gear train in so we're going to start with the barrel i've already oiled the holes here Sure, we're putting this in the right order. I believe we are. So, put a drop of oil on the sweep second pinion here. Is that the right order? Yes, it is. So it comes in like this. The um, escape wheel has a separate bridge, so we're not going to fit that now. So drop a little oil. And I'm going to take a picture for the pipe. There we go. bridge on I'm going to make sure everything all the pivots line up under the microscope as I don't want to damage anything everything lined up nicely So we can see the gear train moves, which is good. Now for the uh, escape wheel. Again, I'm going to have a look under the microscope, make sure that lines up. So a fairly unusual design on these uh, movements compared to your traditional watch. So um, a little bit different, yeah. So now we've got the gear train in, I'm going to um, put oil into the pivot holes here, make sure everything's lubricated as should be, and then we're going to put the uh, crown wheel and the um, ratchet wheel back in place. As you can see, the ratchet is also out, so we're going to put the ratchet in. Okay, now the movement has been uh, oiled. And it's time to put the... Um, let's start with the ratchet. So you can see this little spring here. That's your ratchet spring. And you want that to come in this way. And it will engage with the ratchet. So that's your ratchet in place. This is, of course, what prevents your movement from unwinding after you wind it. Nice. 
and um, that's why we call this the ratchet wheel. That's moving nice and freely, that's good. Here we have the uh, crown wheel, which uh, we call the crown wheel because it's initially the wheel that turns when you turn the crown. Um, yeah. Put a bit of um, oil on that. We can fit the uh, cover. Plate that also holds it in place. Crown wheel screws. Nice, they're secured, and uh, now we can wind the movement. Once I set the time, we wind it. So the next thing to do is put the pallet port fork in place. Being a bit clumsy here. There we go. Let me do this under the microscope as I don't want to break the pallet fork uh, pivot. Oiling the pallet, um, I put a droplet of oil on the pallet dual surface. You can see the um, droplet there. And then move the pallet fork back and forth. Uh, that will distribute the oil onto the escape wheel. Now it's uh, the moment of truth, and that is if we can get the uh, movement to run. Let's fit the balance. That's looking promising. It's always satisfying to see that balance wheel uh, move with a decent amplitude after you have service to movement. Sometimes it doesn't, that means you have another problem, but here it looks pretty good. Nice. I'm going to put this up on the time graph and see how it's performing. Okay, that's pretty good. We have a little bit of a beat error, so I'm going to see if I can adjust that. It's not um, adjustable on the balance cock, so I have to do that on the balance wheel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and adjust the beat error down to at least uh, 0 0.2, um, maximum 0 0.3, maybe push it to four, but uh, ideally less than 0 0.8. Okay, beat error adjusted. I'm very close to my target, 0 0.3, but after four attempts, I uh, think that's good enough. Very um, tricky one to adjust. 291 amplitude, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's flip it around to dial side up. Looks good, almost no variation. I've set it to about plus eight, plus nine. That's plus nine, down hold up. Let's do um, crown down. So uh, crown facing south. 
almost no variation. Going to about um, zero seconds a day, possibly minus one. Do the crown up, so crown north. Um, that's going to be minus uh, three seconds a day about, I reckon. Let's have a look. Still got a very good amplitude, happy with that. Minus 11, okay, a little bit loss on uh, crown up, but uh, overall crown, um, dial up, dial down, very, uh, very little variation in timekeeping and good amplitude. So uh, yeah, we're for a uh, almost six year old watch, I'm very happy with that. Okay, I've been uh, about been out having lunch, and now I'm back. Uh, going to finish off this Longines, hopefully. Uh, as you could tell on the beginning of the video, we had a problem with the um, oscillating weight uh, pivot being broken, and um, I did look at some replacements. Unfortunately, they're quite difficult to get a hold of. So, I did find a donor movement. I uh, think it's a real shame that this end has ended up as a donor movement because I'm pretty sure this came out of a gold case and uh, just look at those hands and dial and everything. It's a spectacular setup, but uh, it has been sacrificed uh, in order for somebody to melt some gold. Uh, needless to say, I think that was probably a very bad choice for whoever had this watch, but um, for me, it's good because that means I can uh, get the oscillating weight I need. Uh, well, the oscillating rotor post. So I can start by removing the uh, the uh, weight. This is um, also in good condition. So I'll put this to the side. And um, there's no point for me taking the dial off because I'm only taking the to auto winding mechanism off. So if anybody has a gold watch with this dial and hands, but your dial and uh, hands are pretty knackered, you know where you can get a donor. That will be available for me, or if I find, find one myself, it would be a real shame just to put this in a drawer because um, this movement is in really, really good condition and the hands and dial are spectacular and that's original as well really cool well i will have to put that to the side and uh yeah i'm going to steal the rotor post See how thin that is in there? Oh, why do they make it like that? I don't know. But that is how it is made, and um, it's very sensitive. Put these screws to the side to go with the oscillating weight, and uh, we're going to use the bridge for the that came with the um, watch we're putting together, and let's see if this comes. This will fit, I'm pretty sure it will. There we go.
And look at that, now we have a complete protopost. Um, might as well put the uh, rest of the auto winding mechanism back together. We have the uh, reverser wheel. They're in good condition. We have the intermediate winding wheel, or intermediate auto winding wheel. Put a drop of oil in there before I put it in. Now we have the covering bridge. That is the wrong screw. Let's get the right one. I might have put that onto the movement. Here's the correct screw. I always find it a bit annoying when a manufacturer decides to make two different pitches uh, on the screw. That's pretty much the same size or slight variation uh, as they did in this case, uh, but uh, that's what they do. Might as well just make two, two yeah, identical screws, uh, in my opinion. Oh well, never mind. Um, yeah, I'm going to oil these two pivots on the microscope and uh, going to fit the bridge onto the movement. That's the bridge in place. For the auto winding mechanism. What I am going to do before I put this uh, movement together is I am going to test the. Um, going to see if it banks with the uh, oscillating weight in place because I've had problems with that before. Might as well put a little bit of. Well, there now, put the weight in. Oh. Make sure it's in open position and it will go in. There we go. Close it. All right, um, I'm back. Sorry for disappearing there. I just had to switch my brain on um, just to make sure I was doing the repair right. And what I have done is uh, reshape the oscillating weight because that was uh, too far down and was touching the bridge. Probably what's happened before is that somebody's um, tried to shape it while it's on the uh, post and snapped the post, but I've taken it off and uh, slightly reshaped it. So now it goes around nicely, it doesn't touch the movement, which is uh, what we want. And it's fully wind, it's not banking, which I have a slight problem on these movements, I have a tendency to bank. And uh, third of all, I have put a little bit of 90-10 lubrication in the, uh, in the uh, reverser wheel and some blue grease where the little poles touch. Uh, so that's uh, moving freely again. So uh, everything's working pretty much as it should. So I'm going to take the oscillating weight out again, and I'm going to fit the dial and hands. You can see there's a nifty little lever on the underside of the uh, oscillating weight, 
that is pushed by this cam. So when this cam is one direction, that pushes the lever up. When you turn it around, the lever comes springs back in. We have nice friction as well on the um, on the cannon pinion, which is good. That means it's not going to slip. If you have low friction on the cannon pinion, uh, this one's quite difficult to tighten, so um, it can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, what you can do is punch it a bit on the underside, widening the cannon pinion and giving it more friction against the wheel. I've done that before. Uh, I have a lot of experience with the 290s and they've always been difficult. This one's gone pretty well so far. Um, you didn't see my uh, fight with the reverse wheels, but that is now sorted. And uh, now for the scary part of fitting the dial and hands. This one seems to be missing a dial washer on the on the uh, hour wheel. So I'm just digging through my dial washer collection to see if I can find one. That will fit nicely on there. I'd rather have a dial washer on there than not. I think it should have one, but uh, it's gone missing at one service in the past. Very fortunate to have a, a set of different sized ones as they can be quite difficult to get across, uh, get hold of. And there's one that fits nicely. If we put that on, I'm going to loosen the dial screws. And then I'm going to hold my breath as I fit the hands <laughs> onto this dial. First, I go to fit the uh, dial onto the movement. This, of course, comes on an angle, so the uh, winder isn't at three o'clock because uh, it's a super, super compressive case. It's going to give it a light cleanup of any loose particles on here. I'm not going to touch uh, anything else. Very nice patinated dial on this. Get the hands out. Now start with the uh, hour hand. Line that up. Now for the minute hand. So 
So it's aligned pretty well. We're going to test that. It's looking good. Let's do six o'clock, see where we're at. Fairly good. Let's go back to 12. That's 11. It's looking good. align that a tiny bit better. So I've aligned that, uh, it's pretty much spot on now. Uh, the last thing to go on is the second hand. Just going to keep this watch pretty much as is with the patina and all. Good, that's spot on. And um, do as little as possible on the dial and hands. Just clean off any loose particles and put it back together. Excuse me, being a bit silent, I'm just uh, focusing on getting the watch into the case. I'm also taking in and out, removing any fibers on the inside of the crystal. Being such a black dial, it's very easy to um, see every little speck and uh, the fiber that goes in there. And it's, uh, it's uh, well, on any watch, it's important to have it all clean, but uh, on a black watch, it's uh, or black faced watch, it's uh, very obvious when uh, you got something in there. So, um, yeah, that's why you got a bit of silence from me. So now I'm fitting the case clamps, which uh, luckily are both intact. I would not want to uh, hunt down any of these. They're a very particular shape and um, I can imagine they're hard to get a hold of. So this crown, I did put some uh, grease on it, is quite stiff. And that's because the rubber has uh, solidified. I'll try to put some, I'll get some more grease in there. That's simply silicone grease. The case back gaskets and crowns. Rub that on. That does help quite a bit usually with the how stiff it is. That's a bit better now. That feels much better. Good. So I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna have a quick look at the dial. I'm quite happy. There's no obvious spots or anything sticking out at me now. Might have to eat my words later, but this is pretty good. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, now I'm going to take a breather. I'm going to put the um, oscillating weight back on and um, then I'm going to remove any 
any fibers or specks that might have gotten into the movement while I was fitting it. And uh, yeah, hopefully put the case back on and call it a day. Very good. Okay, let's put the case back on. Got a new case back gasket in there. Lovely movement, great condition. Now with a uh, working oscillating weight, which is nice. So watch back together, movement in case. Uh, very happy with that. I polished a crystal, so that looks pretty good. Um, I didn't dare take it out of the case because I didn't want to damage it. They're hard to get a hold of. Uh, everything works as it should. No more clanking in the case. So cool. Great looking watch. I uh, wouldn't mind one, to be honest. Uh, nice to have one working as it should again. I feel like I've done my job and uh, I think the owner's going to be very pleased with that. So until next time, have a good one.